Good afternoon. Hello. We are live. We are also very loud. Let's turn that down. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Uh, welcome to the Harley and Josh Show, where we talk about music things, uh, yes. including the music industry. This week, we've got some music by Underline the Sky. Yeah, boy. Brand new music. Um, a new artist called Morin Scale. More on him later on. <laughs> and some music from me, Josh Locke. Thank Locke for that. Oh my god. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, there. And we're going to be talking about, thanks to Robert Horn, music's value. And do we think that the way that we listen to music changes how we value music? And also, we're going to talk about a good, cheap home recording setup. Both very good points. If anybody has any suggestions in the meantime, whilst we're doing live, if you're listening on podcast, don't bother with... Well, you still have a conversation, but still, we're going to be talking about that in the show. So if you're listening live, do drop us in any thoughts you might have on those both things that we just done said. Opinions. Now, Harley. What'd you do? Please tell me. So, I think... I did... I may be wrong. I think this was the first weekend where I haven't had any gigs since, since June last the year. The dawn of June. Since the dawn of June. Amazing. And that was the only weekend I had off because I was it was my birthday. So Aww. I still managed to play. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got to. This is just what happens, isn't it? Yeah. Look at me. <laughs> uh, and I did see some see some music. Um I went to the uh where was it placed? The railway. The railway. Ever so briefly. Mr. Rob Lewis. To see a bit happy of Happy birthday, Lewis. mate, for like the sixth time for yes. both of us. Yeah, they sung him happy birthday whilst I was there. And he, was, he turned to me and was like, it's the sixth time you've sung so happy birthday, birthday to me. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. Rob Lewis, Mr. Boss Rock Project right now. Yeah. So funny, just like how many times we embarrassed him with singing happy birthday to him. But he loved it. He was eating it up, wasn't he? And I, I mean, there is a research that having happy birthday sung to you is good for your health really the more times you have it sung to you the longer you live <laughs> <laughs> is that allowed i can get away with that yep that's good that's i mean it's true yeah <laughs> well yeah. the longer you have lived anyway such a dad joke isn't it yeah. um yeah well, so that, i went along to that now i didn't get to see uh colorblind hedgehogs play for more than like two songs right yeah um However, I did get to see Harmless Crossfire yeah, play again, yeah, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. great because I haven't I haven't seen them play for a little while. Uh, How old are they now? Um, so I'm, I, someone was asking. So I think the youngest one's ten or eleven. That's mad. Oldest one, I believe, is eighteen. Right. Yeah. Um, but and then they are varying ages across the spectrum. Yeah. Sort of fourteen, fifteen. All, all numbers in between yeah. 11 and 18, really. I can't um, think of that many numbers. I, I mean, I, them, there's, them, there aren't any. There's an infinite amount of numbers between those two the two numbers, I'm sure. <laughs> it's infinite, of course. Yes. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. Did there, any songs on the set that you hadn't seen them play yet? Um, no, I think they did Ain't It Fun, I believe. By um, Guns N' Roses? But no, uh, <laughs> by Paramore. I think oh, they did that. I can't I've remember. I know they them. did a Paramore song that I'd, I'd yeah. not heard them play before. I've seen them do it before. They do it so well. Yeah. Jess has just got the right voice for it. That's it. Um, I'd heard they did uh, "Still Into You," which is one of my favorite Paramore songs. I absolutely yeah, that's love a good that. One. But I, I hadn't seen them play that one before. I don't mm. think, and it was really cool because uh, it was just it was really good. How really do you awesome. think their their stage presence has changed since the last time we saw them? They're right? coming on. Jess, the singer, she's uh, certainly um, addressing the crowd a bit more nice. and um, sort of raising her voice between. Uh, songs a bit more it's so so common for people uh, especially whilst they're sort of building their confidence up they'll sing their heart and they'll go ah, la, 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 la. thank you very much uh, this uh, uh, next song is uh, <laughs> thank you I'm sorry oh I'm sorry I was bad oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. there's a lot of that it's apologising before you even play a song yeah. this is going to be really bad we literally just wrote it or something like this yeah but and yeah no I'm glad that they didn't not need to apologise for anything good they were they were absolutely brilliant. Mm. Um, it was great, and um, yeah, so that was really cool. I uh, saw a couple of songs of um, the Hogs of the Hogs, uh, and then my dinner was ready because <laughs> I was very hungry. And my parents said, "We're getting a Chinese. Did you want some?" I'm and I was imagine. like, "A Chinese dinner. A Chinese dinner." <laughs> I was just imagining you're watching two songs, and then suddenly you hear this. 
<laughs> from far off Felix so we have Chinese food like, I must run Da-da-da. I have a pager <laughs> <laughs> I think what he Ms. Marvel yeah uh, so um yeah that was great Chinese was awesome um I had uh, special fried rice duck chow mein uh chips with curry sauce of course and uh spring rolls <laughs> Is oh, this, this another one of your games that you're trying to fit in what you eat now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, great. Yeah, so it was animals last time and squirrels' needs and giraffes' ear whiskers. I mean, they're now all food, t- food as well. Now we're going to be... T- <laughs> you eat giraffes' ear whiskers? Of course I do. What with? Yeah. What with? Yeah. Barbecue sauce, of course. <laughs> I suppose they go with everything. <laughs> yeah. Sauce uh, of cows. Yeah, <laughs> sauce of cow sauce. <laughs> uh, so I had a couple of lessons on the Saturday. Um, I had... Went to the studio to show some people around, so hopefully got some new bookings at Area, Area 51. 51. Here we go. Um, Ticket off your bingo cards. Yes, which I was looking forward to doing some stuff with them. And um, But then I was rush, I had to rush home, pick up my bass, uh, and leg it to... P-p-p- pick up a P bass. To, although I didn't pick up the P bass. I, I, I picked up the jazz, which was... I'm glad pick I did, because jazz, it seemed to work. We were, we were both at the... Um, Three Wise Monkeys Watermelon Jam Now this is put on by 5011 um, Lloyd Willis Turnbull Yes uh, And Daniel Lee Harvey That's it And many many other people Yeah there uh, was, was it Chris uh, Singleton is it I can't remember That the sounds right Yeah And Flo and Flo the drummer Who was great yeah, He did he all the great. graphics for it I was Right was that well his done. thing cool. Yeah Like all the animated graphics That were projected on the yeah. side And stuff He did say He didn't particularly want to He didn't Originally didn't want to get up He wanted just to be there Helping run the event Nice But He's a great drummer. He's a very good drummer. Nice little kit as well, tight little, eight, yeah. like what, eighteen inch, yeah, kick drum. You think? Not even that. Maybe. That's it. It was just a it's like about two inches. Yeah, yeah. Little was, jazz kit. Um, Problem is, it didn't have a porthole, so I think that caused a lot of trouble. That was a to, that was an issue. Yeah. Yeah. It, um, it, yeah. I think the just kick drum was in. yeah mm. uh, was was feeling back a little bit, but they're they're still sort of working working out there. Yeah. Their That's system. the thing. Like there was it was. Such a great caliber of musicians mm. and gear there. Yeah, all night that was really it's great. Really nice equipment. Yeah, I think it was just the thing is like sometimes uh, I said I, I said this to Lloyd. I was like, Look, next time you don't need to bring as much gear. You know what you de- do need and what you don't need. And I, if I was running a jam myself, I wouldn't be bringing all this expensive stuff. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's nice. But it, it was a taster thing for like That's I think it. they're going to do it a lot more. Yeah, um, and just you know, the more that you do things, the more you simplify your setup, and the more easy it gets. I mean, like he was saying, he's like, we've had some teething issues, but those have been ironed out for the next time, so yeah. it won't be a problem next time. Oh, uh, yeah, and like that's it. The, the first one's always going to be the most stressful. That takes the mm-hmm. longest to set up. I was talking with Laura Clemson from the Mementos last was she night. There? Oh, sorry. no, no, last night, I was telling her what I'd been up to, and she's like, why didn't you invite me? And I was like, <laughs> uh, I forgot. Because um, I'm a bad friend. My bad friend. But um, we're saying with, saying with her, like, we, we when we were gigging last year with the Mementos and we were out every weekend, we had so much fun. There were so many videos of us doing silly stuff, like, while setting up, like, playing around, you know, and ha- having a bit of fun with it, you know, obviously before the guests arrive, you know, yeah, where yeah. we can have a, have a bit of fun because we were so... We were so in the zone and we knew exactly what was going on. So it was just easy to do yeah. when you kind of come back up. If you have like a gig, which you haven't and you haven't played Done together before. in a month yeah. or, you know, a little while, you kind of then kind of have to go back to that. Well, let's do this. Let's do this. Yeah, sort of, yeah. uh, what do I need to do? What do, uh, what can I be doing here? Because I'm, you know, yeah, let's it, yeah, let's suck it and see gigs. Like, yeah. you know, I've you know, we haven't had to do that with the lockerbillies for a long time. Yeah. Um, it's only the times when you end up in a venue that is a challenging one, like yeah. you know, something very high ceilings, or you're outdoors, or mm. something like this. That's when you're like, okay, we're going to have to think about this a bit more, um, because we don't have a preset on the desk for that sort of thing. Yeah. But you know, they were working. Uh, I, I don't know what they were they were running through because they were had the QSCs. Didn't the QSC but... system, uh, really nice fold back. Yeah. Um, which I think was probably pushing that's more out in the front. Yeah. yeah that's Lloyd's stuff. Um, I can't remember the name. But what about the, the, the actual mixer? Did they have a Behringer? It was a Midas, uh, MR18. Oh, right, same thing nowadays. So it's the same uh, system as what I've got. I think it has got upgraded preamps in it. Yeah. Um, but they, they run exactly the same thing. They run on the same app. Mm. I have the Midas and the Behringer app on yeah. my phone, and I can use either and it's it Behringer that owns my it's not the other way around yes. right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah it, it's a great desk it, it's great um, the problems they were having with it were the same ones I had on my first gig where you're still sort of learning 
to transition into that kind yeah. of no hardware. It's like you're great. You got a, you got a touch screen and everything, but just actually getting to the right windows. You know, finding yeah. your graphic EQ and knowing knowing where the preamps can be driven, where they drive to, and sort of mm. what your thresholds are because it's not always the same threshold from one desk to another yeah, like, or the one venue to another yeah you know on some desks you can really run it into the red and it will sound great whereas yeah. others you can't you know um so just knowing knowing where those pre's sort of peak yeah. and where where they where they thrive but you can tell that they're all professional yeah you know tech guys that have done it all before and they figured out the you know all the hiccups they, they figured and, it out pretty quick yeah yeah, yeah exactly so uh, hopefully that'll become a monthly thing yeah i mean the the musicianship there was incredible it was great Gil yeah. Waters like yes he got on drums and keys just a you know that was a pleasure I've, I've, I've seen him play at the last Soul Jam that was at Dejero's about two years ago I think it was the yeah. first time I'd ever seen Vanya from Motherfunker right. sing live I mean I'd heard well I'd heard her just her and I just like hanging out and she would just sort of sing and we'll, yeah. we'll sort of sing together but like when uh, with a band behind her I was like okay what's this just me and a bunch of her mates were just sitting there going, you need to get a band. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, she always wanted to have a band. But, you know, it, so it, it's a great thing. So there was a, a, a new girl that got up singing on the Friday night that I had not seen before. Yes, uh, she was a she was She staff, worked at Three yeah. Wives, yeah. And, uh, and she's, she's got a great voice. So and I think she had the same thing where like, she'll have loads of friends and they go, you've got to get up and sing more. That's so, it. They were all, she had a lot of friends with her who were really supportive and yeah. sort of really pushing her sort of, that she might not have, might not have done it without that support, which mm. was great. That she's got, she's got those people yeah, and those she friends. She did well. She did well. She really well. Um, yeah, yeah. It was good. Tip your waitresses, guys, because they might be amazing singers. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, you know that kind of stuff is wonderful to have, isn't it? Yeah, Just it's great every uh, month. The I, I I hope that there's more. I hope that there. Yes. I mean, there definitely will be. Mm. I hope that they don't clash because the problem with it being on a Saturday night is it's very common yeah. for gigs. Yeah. Um, well, I think that's what he was hoping for. Lloyd was saying to do it on a weekday. Yeah. Um, which would be good because, you know, most, if they, they'd have to book musicians to be in a house band Yeah. for, you know, the, the, the pay for house band gigs isn't as much as a normal gig. No. So trying to get people up uh, and, you know, let other people use their gear as well uh, for less money on a week weekend is hard yeah so that's why most jams are happening on weekdays yeah um, so you know if it happens that'd be great because i mean you know what days have we got the jams on thursdays around? thursdays we're webby's jams when are they they're also thursdays, thursdays isn't they? yeah thursday seems to be an ideal night because it's the nearest night to the weekend that isn't the weekend yeah because people are like oh I can, if i'm too hung over i can at least i can only just take friday off yeah <laughs> and then i'm sorted <laughs> that's it the only downside is there being already two jam sessions it's it's kind of that that market saturated mm. on for that day and if anyone wants to do something you know if if, yeah. if you're going to cross reference with the same sort of crowds yeah. another night is the way to go but, i mean lloyd has has been going on at me for ages to come with him to down to one of the london jams and i've yeah. never been I've, well, oh. I, well when i lived in london i did them but i never went with with lloyd and uh he, you know just saying about the certain ones that he goes to that, lo that he loves um, so you know, don't forget that if if there aren't should, jams near you, you can travel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we should we should we should go up. We should make a fill a car full. Yeah, of jam. Fill a car of jam. And then jam. What flavor jam? Uh, uh, marmalade. Uh, marmalade flavored jam. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good band name. Marmalade flavored jam. <laughs> so you you had plans last night as well. Yes. Yeah, so um. Uh, so I did that yesterday. Uh, I was rehearsing with Chart Attack. We rehearsed mm -hmm. without Oscar, which was a shame. Um, Took off your bingo cards. He, Not <laughs> without Oscar bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that comes out quite a lot. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, obviously, him living sort of London direction. Uh, he had, didn't have any gigs this way, so it was not worth him coming all the way just for rehearsal, which is completely fair enough. And he's very good at sort of learning stuff in his mm -hmm. own time. Yeah, yeah. So we just re we recorded what we learned and sent it to him. We got a new few, few new songs added to the set. Probably not for this weekend, uh, but they will probably maybe be on, added to the set next weekend. Probably maybe, guys. However, we'll be probably doing that next gig we're doing without Oscar. So oh, we'll see how we go. Goodness. Um, so we've got Nick Keeble on with us the oh, following weekend. Nice. So we're looking forward to that too. That would be great. Um, so that was a really good rehearsal. We had lots of fun. We did some recording as well, uh, just doing some stuff for the backing track, Got getting some real vocals on there, um, which was really cool. Um, and I finished the night off at the... Manning's open mic night, which is Robin Dicker's open open mic. Yeah, yeah. Which is really good fun. Um, is that a recent edition, or has that been I, going for a while? I now? think that's a monthly thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was a it was a ruined a little bit by 
the open mic lot were at the front and, you know, doing their thing. And you had people sort of go up singing some original music. But at the back of the pub, there were people football chanting to each other. Goodness. Over, yeah. That were louder than the than the PA. You love football, don't you? Uh, <laughs> don't swear on the radio. I really want to. <laughs> Hold my hand. Stop me swearing. Okay. But they were ruining it because they were just being loud and just so rude to the people who were on stage, you know. Given, and yeah, bearing their soul. We were all kind of just sitting there going... Come on, guys. Do you mind? Do you mind like just mm. going outside, or you know that'd yeah. be fine, or go onto a pitch, mm. you know where football <laughs> happens, perhaps, <laughs> or maybe uh, do some football rather than being a fat layabout in a pub. But that's what football fans are. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, okay, we've delved okay. deep. Yeah, but yeah, no, cool. Uh, Shots fired. Well, Harley, mate, you know what I mean? Like, I do know what I mean. You did some great things. Harley did stuff well done, buddy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, so, mate, uh, I would like to show you some new music that Andrew Coulter has sent us. Oh, please do, mate. Um, from Dystopian Sound Collective. They do have a gig coming up. Uh, there's a brand new album that he's got coming out. Uh, which has got this electronica, uh, found sound kind of stuff going on. There's some real nice soundscapes that he's playing with, and uh, it's a real immersive li- listening experience. I mean, he's given me the whole album, well, us the whole album, nice. uh, to listen to. So you're going to have to have a little a listen through that. It'd be good for, I think it's good for sort of mindfulness exercises and, and breathing exercises sometimes. Okay, I mean, cool. like that kind of thing. Um, but this one is called On Title by Maureen Scale. Check it out, guys. That was on title by More and Scale. You can hear more of that. Uh, his album coming out soon. It's being released by Corn Dog Records, so you can check that out. We'll give out the old links and everything like this. So yeah, nice one, Andrew. Thanks for sending that in. If yeah, you guys man. have got some music that you want to get uh, promoted, etc., like this, please give us an email at Harley and Joshua at gmail That's right. Dot, dot yeah. com, dot com, isn't it? Yes. So yeah. Um, so Harley, I'm thinking about skipping my section where I talk about me. Because I'm going to play one of my own songs later anyway. Um, Fair enough. And I would like to dive into Jim Lee's question about a cheap home recording setup. Okay, yeah. Thanks, Jim, for sending that. Yeah, good one. Because I think that's a really good subject where I think we're both quite adept in talking about because we've both sort of Mm -hmm. been in this... And to be honest, my, my starter rig is very much still my rig. Still the same rig, yeah. So I've broken this down... Uh, and I've got some prices here as well uh, mm. into a couple sections. So we've got to think about a computer. That's a good start. One, two audio fa- interface. Yes. Uh, three monitors. Yes, definitely. Four headphones. Five, the door, digital audio workstation. Yep. Six controllers. Uh, PS4, s- PS3. <laughs> <laughs> seven software instruments. Yep. And eight microphones. Cool. So that- not, we don't need eight up microphones. But yeah, yeah so I've broken up <laughs> just eight sections and we can talk about what we sort of do. Because what he wants is a, a cheap and affordable home recording setup um, yeah. that I think that will, that will sound good. Because, I mean, the, the thing is you don't need really expensive gear these days to be able to make something that sounds professional to somebody that doesn't no. care <laughs> as well. Uh, oh, <laughs> so when you're, when you're working on a budget at home, when you're... It's also who's going to be hearing this. Yeah. If it's you're, you're if you're doing this for fun or starting out, people you're going to be playing to to you know potentially your friends and stuff like that mm-hmm. to start with and growing a base from there. At this early stage, they want to hear the ideas of the song. Yeah, the quality is the sort of thing when it's going to a mass market, thousands, thousands of people. Yeah, but your your initial supporters will be people who just want to hear you. Yeah, your demo is like your elevator pitch, isn't it? It's that yeah. kind of thing where you just have to just tell somebody what you're up to snappily, and then they can figure it out for themselves. Mm. So anyway, let's get a little quick thing. So computer, so start? Computers. number one, computer. Most people will have a computer already. Yeah, although uh, that's becoming a rarer thing nowadays. Yes, both people get um, their phones and their iPads, and you yeah. can use your phone and your iPad. Yes. Angel, who we've had on the show, and we've played her music that she has written on her phone. Oh, really? Wow. On the show before. So, you know, people haven't really noticed. They haven't said anything like, that sounded like a phone recording. I would have known. But you are a PC guy, aren't you? I'm a PC guy, yeah. Um, I'm very much for tower builds uh, over 
um, laptops. So making your own one. A desktop well, yeah, or thing. even a pre-build. My first one was a pre-build, and mm-hmm. I got it quite cheap. It was just it was a very basic computer. Now, for the programs that I was running at the time, I think I was running uh, Cubase, which is a very light program. Yeah. Um, it's it's uh, it's it's a full program. It's got everything you need we'll to do to it in it. That door. We'll yeah. get that to that door. Um, but you don't need a crazy high powered computer just to to sort of get started. Mm. So that's what we're kind of thinking about here. Because I went laptop, yeah. your desktop. I go laptop because I like being portable and I like to be able to yeah. just also just have one computer for you know all my jobs. If I need to go for a meeting, then yeah. I'm there. I have three. So <laughs> that's good. Yeah, yeah. So you can do it on an iPad or a tablet as well. Mm. Uh, you know, a lot of people have. Uh, was it Band? Oh, Band, not Band Camp. Ugh, rock, not rock. Band, Garage Band. Garage Band, that's it, yeah. Jeez. So your Garage Band will be built into some iPads, so yeah. it's quite a nice logical step up. Too logic. Too logic. Um, that's it. it, it it's not, it, you know, when it comes to sort of... Also, when you're coming to computers, it also does vary on your operating system. Yeah. Uh, going back to, like I say, my pre- preference with Tower is that if I'm using something and I don't have enough RAM or I need a better processor, I can do it bit by bit. Mm-hmm. And it's a bit more... Fit- bit more affordable or bite by bite bite by bite bit by bit i see what you did there mm-hmm. gigabit by gigabit um and then you can kind of build your build your system up to be a bit more uh powerful if you need to yeah as um, you go but whereas laptops you, you you're very stuck you, to that kind particular of, yeah. casing and yeah and uh in terms of affordable mm-hmm. laptops tend to be Way a more bit affordable. more well, Way more I, affordable from what I've seen. Oh, I'll go the other way. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Because I, I mean, my my computer, my current computer is quite high powered. It cost me five hundred pound. Yeah, uh, and well, you the nearest laptop equivalent to that is three thousand pound. It still would have a limited processor because they have to be. That's also due to treated. you having good spec. So you've got yeah. sort of. I mean, you know, oh, yeah. what, how, how much sort of RAM have you got? I've got sixteen gigs. Sixteen gig, yeah. So yeah. I mean, the really kind of all you need is about two to three to do some music. Do a music, you know. Yeah. Uh, to do a music, to do a basic music, to you do can a basic get by music, with two or three gig, and so um, of RAM. So it's kind of like, and you know, sort of like these i five core yeah. processors are fine. So that's what I kind of went off on, sort of like going for the bare mm. basics. What we can do. So I found a MacBook Pro, okay, um, which uh, is one of those thirteen inch screen things, yeah, but still had two gig of RAM and uh, an i5 processor yeah. so would be able to run logic and everything like this uh, it was bit, most of the ones i found were between 150 and 200 quid oh, that's eBay. really affordable yeah yeah um going and going on laptop side of things um i personally i'm a windows guy but the build quality on macbooks are much better than the equivalent laptops you will get They're for the same price. price yeah um the the sort of the best kind of uh the opposite to that, so the PC market that I sort of saw on on sort of ranking sites as a good uh, startup PC was a Lenovo ThinkPad, yeah, and that was one hundred and fifty to three hundred pounds. So you know, yeah. in between that kind of thing, you've got a little bit of a of leeway there. You might have to be buying second hand for that, but yeah, I'd say you know, and but I mean, so minimum pr- requirements. What would you say for a computer? I would say for a computer, I'd, I'd say start with four gig at least. Four um, gig, yeah, just because we're modern. Of RAM. Yeah, four gig RAM with modern day. That's kind of a good starting point. I think these had about two hundred and fifty gig hard drive. Yeah, um, you do need a bit of space because web yeah. files are large, yes. and the operating systems themselves are also very large. And also, remember, you're going to be recording. You're going to be re-recording and stuff like that. And yeah. you'll, you know, if you do something wrong, it will still sometimes keep those oh, those those bad takes on there. So, what do you think? I've um, got five hundred gig of RAM, and I haven't used it up yet i've had to delete the laptop for about two years yeah so that's all right but i'm that's not okay. recording constantly yeah so 250 I, to 500 gigs all right but you should get some external hard drive I, yeah i run i mean i've got th- four hard drives again my computer is quite high spec yeah um i've got and i run my hard drive i've got 250 gig hard drive built in that runs the operating system and then i've got two 500s and a terabyte external or not external but yeah. additional drives um I use a lot of that stuff because I do a lot of full band recording. Mm -hmm. When you're using programs and stuff, we'll get to like VSTs. You use a lot less. You use a lot less uh, space in your in your in your bank. Yeah, so that's good. So yeah, so we're looking at about about two hundred quid for a computer. Yeah. Straight off the back, I've done a big sort of breakdown at the end of this as well. Cool. So, point number two, point number two, point number two, point number two um, audio interface. So, have you got a compact one or like a rack mounted one? I have both, but both. I only ever use the compact one nowadays. Yes, yeah, same. Um, how many channels do you think is good? So, 
to start with two in yeah. two out is fine yeah um i like having four out sometimes because it helps it, uh, it well my my four out one i use as a backup for chart attack mm-hmm. um but what's that one what is uh, it? so uh, the old the, the the four out one is a focus sapphire focus right sapphire six i right. think um which is great it's green uh the new one i've got is the is the scarlet one it's red yeah yeah um, so that's what i've got yeah i've the got great, the scarlet 2i2 exactly the same yeah, yeah. i've got the first gen that's one great and i've actually are. put that on a breakdown of the of the pricing for this because i got mine for 100 quid yeah 100 quid and you get the cheaper online i got mine second hand literally was it two weeks ago when i came on the way to the show i picked mine up and yeah. i paid 60 quid for it's it it's great and they are they are they're really good. I recorded good. a lot of my last album on that. Uh, I, I still man- managed to record uh, a four piece horn section on yeah. two inputs, just with being a bit creative. So once you figure out, once you know your hardware and you know how you're running, uh, you know how to run things, then you know it's you don't have to be too limited by your inputs anyway. Yeah. Um. So uh, USB, Thunderbolt, Firewire, all that sort of stuff. What kind of connectivity do you think is the best? USB all the way. Yeah. Um, Firewire is now old tech. Thunderbolt yeah. is is there, but it's also limited to to Max. To Max. Uh, whereas Max have USB, um, yeah. and so do computers. USB two and three. Most um, you've got USB one, two, and three, and they're basically the speeds. USB one is kind of now out of date. Mm-hmm. USB two, they're all compatible, backwards compatible, yeah. by the way. But USB two is plenty fast enough for a lot yeah. of what you want to do. And when I say speed, uh, it just avoids latency. Um, which you can kind of get around anyway. True, if you're, yeah. If you're that's, too... in, in Logic, you've literally just got a setting that you can just put low latency mode, just just blocks off all your buses and, and, yeah. and specific gaining uh, gain stages, and you're fine. Yeah. Um, uh, converters and preamps. I mean, that two i two. They kind of all built in. Great yeah. I think when you're working on a when you when you're working on a budget. Yeah. All in box is a way to go. Um, mm. When people have like specific preamps and specific converters, mm. that's when you start to add a bit of money to it. But for yeah. the sake of getting getting your ideas down onto a onto a digital tape, yeah, um, that's you need you know, to get some good converters. Just because otherwise, like if you are working at high gain, you are sort of like in a metal band or a hardcore band, and you want to be shouting down the microphone yeah. and getting some good distortion out of it. If you've got a converter that's kind of messing up. Yeah. Your signal in between going from analog to digital back to analog again, mm. it's just going to sound very just bitty, isn't it? Yeah, I did have... <laughs> it's not going to be a lot of uh, definition to it. There's a fault with my Sapphire, actually, um, and I think it's just a fault in the way they're built, that they clip digitally before they clip analog. Oh, oh that's annoying. Um, generally, when I'm using something like that, I don't want clipping anywhere. But, not at all, yeah. But... The fact that I was getting digital clip before I was getting good signal meant that I was recording everything at minus 10 dB, which right, was yeah. not ideal. That padding everything. Yeah. yeah. But all right. Well, so well, I've got down that the, the Focusrite Sus Scarlet 2i2 is about 100 quid. Yeah. Um, the Roland Duo Capture EX. I was going to say the Duo Capture and the Rubik's. One. That's about also. 100 quid as well. Yeah. But I've, I found a bunch of like bundles where you could get cables. Uh, I think for about 300 quid, you could get a condenser, some monitors, and the audio interface as well. Wonderful, that's so great. That, I found that on sort of gear for music and and Andertons and all that yeah. sort of stuff. Uh, right, number three. Number three monitors. Okay. Um, so the general consensus is to get something neutral, mm. not going for DJ or personal kind of things where you yeah. get that a lot of bass response, um, and it's kind of coloured for for it to sound a bit shinier. Yeah, you want something that's just going to make it sound as bad as it is. <laughs> and this, I think, is going to be possibly one of the more expensive parts of a yes um, of a of of a buy because. Um, you can well, I mean, you can spend thousands on a single speaker. Yeah, just one. Yeah, but um, uh, what 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 did you find? So uh, so I'm kind of look, thinking about uh, budget things again. So mm-hmm. I went so the KRK rockets, the that, fives. That's what I use still. Yeah, still um, they're about 250 quid for, yeah. for two. If you can find that deal, that's pretty good. Yeah, um, um, 300 quid is kind of more common, but you'll be able to find them. Yeah. Um, uh, the Focal Alpha 50s are bit, apparently a very good sort of start-off thing. But again, they're 500 quid for a pair. And mm. a lot of these you won't find just as a pair. It's not like hi-fi speakers. Yeah. Most of them you will have to buy each. Yeah. each. Um, what else we got? The Yamaha HS5s to 8s. I and mean, that's what yeah. Rich and Murray's got. I think Murray's got HS8s. Yeah. And, Mar- and Rich's got the HS5s. They're based on the NS10s, aren't they? Yeah. They're, yeah. The, they're kind of the modern active and... 
Yeah. I mean, they sound. I think they sound a lot nicer. Their mid-range yeah. is. They've got the mid, similar mid-range to the NS10. Anyone who doesn't know what the NS10 is, yeah, it's kind of the world famous. It's the it's the good bad speaker if that makes yeah. sense they, because like it was it's really honest sounding so which, um, you know exactly what you're getting yeah uh, people say if you can make a mix sound good on NS10 you can make it will sound good on anything yeah it's the same with those, what they called what they called uh, the pork pie speakers or something like this they're, or I can't remember what they're called they're just like a single speaker and they just look absolutely tiny right and people mix on mono on those I've got uh, to find okay. out what they are I've seen them in a lot of studios yeah a lot of good mastering suites will have them and if again if you can make a good mix sound good on a mono speaker um that's small that yeah. means that it might sound good on people's phones um the 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 story i believe is with the ns10 is when they came out and they, they designed it to be like i say completely honest now you don't necessarily want a speaker to sound good because you want it to tell you what's wrong with yeah. your mix yeah, huh? and when these ns10s that's kind of how they were designed and they went, oh, these are terrible, la di da di da So they all sort of, pe- studios would throw them out, return yeah, them, whatever. Yeah. A lot of people turn these uh, these NS10 cones into microphones, ah. into the sub mics, what people use nowadays. Oh, great, of course. They're designed on the, they were used oh, an NS10 cone. Facts. But it was later on down the line when people were like, oh, no, they're, they're actually really good. They but kind they of got out- it later on, and then the prices just hiked up. Yeah, when they made out of like a like an endangered Brazilian wood as well. So <laughs> Potentially. They, yeah, so people that you weren't allowed to actually farm that anymore. Um, right. Anyway, but the last put, um, entry I put on the monitors was the the monitors I've got, which I've used for absolute years. Mm. It's just called Behringer MS Forties. They got uh, I got a pair for one hundred and eight pounds. They've mm. served me fine. They're a little bit bass heavy, but you can uh, there is a, like a little EQ on there, so you can right. cut it out. I don't know. It, once you get your ears used to a set of monitors and you listen to lots of different types of music that you like and that you want to sound like through them then you can get an idea of how to make your music sound the same yeah um but you have to get used to it don't you there's one thing to be added which is something that neither of us really seem to use is headphones monitoring with headphones oh you got that okay fourth point um headphones yeah go on then so people mix with headphones it's not something i'm particularly good at but uh those who um that's only if you've got sort of family members that are like, please shut that noise off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or students or, that are like, you know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> students who live in, a, in sort of shared, shared accommodation homes, yeah. and stuff like that. Um, you can get good results out of monitors. Um, he- you might want to spend yeah. the same sort of money yes, that, cans. yeah, sort of headphone monitor, sorry. Yeah. Um, you might want to spend the same sort of money as you would do, you know, above £100 to get some decent reference yeah. monitors. But, but yeah, I found some uh, of that kind of ilk. Okay. Um because yeah, like you say, you get a limited frequency range. Yeah. Um, then uh, some people say you can tire your ears out yeah. if you just listen to headphones all the time. It's especially if you don't have like open back ones. Yeah. They just you know it's very oppressive if you've just been mixing for hours. Um, consumer headphones and DJ headphones aren't good because again no. they're, they're like, the same as like consumer. They're designed speakers. to sound good, not real. Yeah, exactly. Good, not real. That's that's, that's right. So we want real, not good. Um, so yeah, to make it sound real. Good. Yeah. So DJ headphones. They often crank the bass because if you're if you're DJing a very large large you know, venue yeah. where there's a lot of people shouting around you, you can lose a lot of frequency. So it yeah. kind of accounts for that. So I've got the Bayard Dynamic uh, DT seven seventies. Yeah, I've seen them in so many different studios. Um, industry standard. Really. They, they are pretty much yeah. They're they hundred are quid. There we go. There we go. That's great. Uh, f- the Phonons SMB02 have been quite lauded um, that I've seen on, on, on multiple lists. Uh, they're about £300. So that's another kind of industry standard. But they don't, I don't think they make them anymore. Oh, okay. Again, I've yeah, seen yeah. them in a bunch of studios. But I don't think... Um, what have I got here? So the best one I could find was the Grado SR60s. Right. And they're quite a small company, but they're selling them for 75 quid. Wow, the SR60E Grado, so, so they and they've, they've got had some, some good, good industry reviews. Yeah, that's great. Um, it's worth mentioning here as well. If you're going to be doing stuff like recording vocals, you're going to even if you're mixing with with monitors, you're you going need to, headphones. you need headphones to play back or now, instruments like yeah. you're marking amps up. Yeah, because you don't want bleed from the microphone. Of course, of the background music. Now I do when I'm monitoring. I don't necessarily use like high end mixing headphones. Sometimes I use just my my Apple yeah my Air, earpods whatever you call yeah. them, and they'll do just as long as I can stay in time and play in, yes, my Apple ear whiskers, um, uh, so I can play in time and be in tune, well, at least try to be, um, yeah. so that that's something you it's want to do. It's good to have a well. metronome yeah. when you're doing stuff in time for drummers, if you wanted to record drummers. So yes, let's get on to the next point, rocketing through... <laughs> 
D A W or door. That's a really nice noise. Thank you. We recorded that. Um, so, Logical Pro Tools. Uh, Logical Pro Tools are great. They can be... I, I don't know how much Logic is. Pro Tools is expensive. I've got, I've got the breakdown here. Um, f- if you're working on a budget, my go-to every time would be Reaper. Reaper, free. It's absolutely free. You do technically have to pay for it, but you get a 30-day free trial, and after that, you can then buy... I think it's about £60, which is very affordable. It's great, isn't it? Um, I mean, so you've got the, sort of the top ones that we yeah. sort of boost people. Logic, Pro Tools, FL Studio, or Fruity Loops. Yes. Um, I... Cubase, but the FL Studio only works on PC though, so you can't actually get that on Mac. Right, okay. Uh, Cubase. Does that work on Mac? Uh, I've seen ports of it on Mac, but right. I mean, whether you can get that out of the box, I don't know. Uh, Reaper, which is great. Bigwig, which I've heard is quite good. Bitwig. Bitwig. Yes. Uh, oh, that's, I've spelled that... that wrong. I'm thinking of the rabbit from Watership Down. <laughs> <laughs> I used Bitwig for a little while. That's I tried it, it out. It's very similar to Ableton. I'm sure that was probably... Okay, yeah. And closer. Ableton is the next Ableton one. Live. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Um, Ableton and Bitwig, they're more for live show stuff. I wouldn't right, yeah. potentially use it for recordings, but I know uh, other people, um, I've got a lot of friends who do use it for recording Um but I don't know what they come with. Oh, we've got to rock it through now. Um, oh, crikey. One quick point on. on the door side of things. If you buy a brand new sound card, often they come with a light version of a recording software, mm. often Ableton or Cubase Lite, um, yeah. which is a, a limited version. So you can, you've can you got something to at least get started with and try stuff out. That's good. Yep, yeah, sweet. So I've got it as Logic is about 200 quid, okay. direct download. Pro Tools is 265 quid cheapest. Okay. Annual sub available for 75 quid. Yep. Uh, Ableton's about 300 pounds. Fruity Loops between 170 to 250 quid. Cubase, about 480 quid. Right. Reaper's free or 60 quid. And Bitwig is about 219 pounds. So I think Logic is a... I, I like it for composition. Yeah. Um, better than Pro Tools. Um, yeah, you've definitely. got to get used to the layout, layout and the short, the keyboard shortcuts, and I'm so used yeah. to that with Logic now. Logic is... Trial and error, isn't it? There's plenty of YouTube videos out there, though. You oh, know, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah whenever, you, whenever you're stuck, you can just... Ugh, My thing, uh, the reason why I'm, I've never really used Logic is because I'm not a Mac guy, uh, and it only works yeah. on Mac. Um, yeah. So, th- again, that's something to consider. It. If you're going to go com- with your computer or laptop, whatever, know what programs are available with what system yeah. you're building and also just a little bit of the terminology you don't have to have a yeah. degree to be a good producer um, no. if you get the producer's manual by paul white and he was the editor of sound on sound for a long time i use that and it's great if you just sort of yeah. get a little bit of terminology so you know what to search for on youtube anyway yeah. let's rock it through to bit, 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 controllers controllers so uh, we're talking keyboards pads triggers and knobs yeah uh, just to assign parameters to um so i've just got like a little m audio uh, 48 key yeah For, um, no not 48 key I have the Alesis Axiom 32. Sorted, yeah. Uh, which is go. a very... How much that cost you? Um, I got it second hand for about 25 quid. That's great. Um, uh, bought it off a friend, you know, mm. he wasn't using it. Now this is the sort of thing, depending on what sort of music you're doing, it's worth, I would say, buy cheap, buy twice. <laughs> because mine's very basic. I don't know how often I'm going to use it. Right. Turns out not a lot. So there's no point me spending a couple hundred quid on a yeah, very yeah, yeah. in-depth system that I'm not going to really yeah. get I had the benefits that with, from. Uh, with an M Audio um, uh, control surface, mm. that automated faders and all this sort of stuff. Barely ever used it. Sold it off and just bought the Focusrite TY2. Yeah. Um, so I've got here. So um, I just have a USB keyboard. Yeah. But for pads and triggers and stuff like that, it's great just you know for triggering samples. Mm. Um, the Samsung Graphite, the M32, is quite good. That's 45 quid. Nice. Brand new. Yeah. Tiny little keyboard with some pads. Uh, these are all the same kind of thing. You've got the Akai MPH Mini, which is about £67. Gil Waters was using a great keyboard yes. at the Jam, which... Uh, was that a controller, was it? Cause it it's a controller because he had yeah. a laptop with him. So it's an M Audio Code 49. It's about 170 quid, but it's got a full-size keyboard yeah. as well as your pads, triggers, and all the knobs that you can assign parameters. So that could be frequency sweeps. And he knew that. Sweeps. He knew inside out. He'd yeah, he did, programmed yeah. it to a way that he really Yeah, so once you get it. your head around it. Uh, right, so... Software instruments, not going to go de- de- beep, 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 no. um, uh, into it fully because there's so many of them. Yeah. I would say go free. VSTs are VSTs free VSTs are everywhere. great. Again, uh, worth bearing in mind, VSTs don't work with Pro Tools. Um, oh. Pro Tools use AAX or TDM on the older versions, uh, and they do sound good, uh, but you don't get as many free ones with, uh, as you yeah. do with VST. But in terms of instrument, like you get loads of, there are loads of free effects on their yeah. compressors. I mean, and stuff. Logic and Ableton have them free. 
Yeah. Right? It just got loads yeah. just in there. Um, whereas Pro Tools, we won't have it so much. Native um, Instruments. They do a free... Native James. Sorry. They do some freeware. Um, yeah, that's what I was about to uh, Yeah, definitely, you're right. I mean, I've got the full lot with that, and it's yeah. great, but the, the, the basic basic library is just great for just getting yeah. ideas down. Loads nice of synth, and quick. little easy, easy synth yeah. stuff that's already there. So you've got that. Eraser Face is a good... Uh, oh, yeah. He's an artist, and also uh, he gives out lots of free AVSTs quite often. KVR Audio and Soundhack Ichiro Toda's Synth 1 is very good, which Wonderful. I've used. So, so that's uh, this is Soundhack. So... so, so it's basically just a free thing. Google it, and you'll be able to find some free sounds. Great. Um, quickly, the last point: microphones. Interesting. <laughs> now, I, I, if I take, if I make it, because I'm a microphone yes, nerd you're f- now. Microphone feed. Yes, I've got some very nice, expensive microphones which I use daily, which are great. However, valve mics. They take half hour to set up. A lot of power. Yeah, they require their own power supply. Uh, you know, they got to warm up. Mm. Um, I've got a lot of rubber mics. They take a lot of work to make them sound exactly how you want them sometimes. Mm. Um, so I also have a cheap condenser mic, uh, which cost me, I think, something about 20 £25. Pound. Large diaphragm condenser. Technically, it's a small diaphragm in a mm. big body, so it's a cheap one. Right. But just for getting ideas down that's great yeah and if not like a handheld mic can some actually does sound better than a cheap condenser it can and um, it, you know depending on how you mic things up if you're yeah. actually very good you can make uh you know a, a, a bad mic sound just as good as a good mic yeah if you like if you're a bad if, if you're not good at producing but you've got you know a u87 which is two thousand pounds at least yeah, yeah. um you, it's still not going to sound good no. um but you know if you've got classic rode nt1 135 quid so many people have that yeah and you know how to mic up properly you don't need when i money in there. when i first started uh doing recording and stuff i borrowed a u87 off a friend to record the aurora which is yeah, elliot's old that. band yeah, yeah. and it sounded terrible because it was such a sensitive mic it picked up all the bad things in the room yeah it picked up the whole room yeah so it may it would have made more sense for a like a fifty eight or an SM seven B, something like that, that just that. nice and close. Fifty eights, fifty sevens, they've been using them since the sixties. They work to fine. recording, they've worked fine. So many famous recordings that you've heard probably of of, of yep. fifty eights and you didn't know. But I mean, you know, so uh, condenser mics are great because they're much they've got much better transient response yeah so i mean you know this but i mean so if you want something that's going to be precise and you want to get those nice chimey acoustic things or something out of the saxophone yeah. when you get everything then you know get a condenser but if you're not that bothered you're just doing demo vocals get a 58 58s i mean eight, 85 quid i found them online yes you can get second hand easy you do get them you have to be careful a little bit with some of the cheaper ones. Yeah, they they are knockoffs. They are, have been faked quite a lot, which yeah. is something to be wary of. But um, if you buy from reputable stores new, um, then you're going to yeah. get you're get a decent product either way. Yeah, the the diaphragm of the condenser has less mass, so it's much more accurate. But it does need phantom power, so you have got to look for that in your uh, in your um, that's of a condenser audio yeah. interfaces. Yeah. Um, I've I've got a Bluebird blue microphone which is yeah. which is lovely it served me really well but that was about 180 quid Wonderful. um but you know i found them on here for 135 quid 75 quid yeah. 500 quid for a 414 but you know my first condenser was a red 5 mic rv6 it cost me 75 pound and i think they're still available still, for that price there we go sorted i mean you, you can you know if you're good like harley you can make it sound good um right so i've got to do a quick round up the cheapest option of all of this stuff that we've just yeah. said uh i've gone for the macbook 13 inch with a Scarlet 2i2, uh, mm. Behringer MS40s uh, for monitors. So that was the laptop, that's the, the audio interface, and the monitor sorted. We've got the Grado SR60Es for headphones. Mm. Uh, we've got Reaper for yeah. the door. For door for, um, Are these free. all new? Yes, all yeah. new, yeah. Um, Samsung Graphite for a keyboard. Um, I've, I've missed out on con- on compressors because you can just get them in the box now yeah. and people aren't going to be that bothered and the MXL 990 which is a condenser microphone for 75 quid and they're very good as well they're good aren't they that's 553 quid for a from scratch home studio setup yeah I mean if you think about it if you wanted to go and record in a studio for a weekend that's going to be a grand yeah so if you can just literally just you know uh, buy all this stuff and just donate a little bit like a weekend 
to doing to just mm. figuring it all out then you've you've saved money for every time you want to go to the studio and you can upgrade all these bits separately so if you want to upgrade your microphone and have a better mic if you want to have a slightly more powerful computer you can do that bit by bit you don't mm. have to get everything all at once it's not like a car yeah you can buy it in stages and also and attends and give for music mm. all these places do finance deals we get 0% oh, yeah. finance and just play it off monthly for a whole year yeah. and I've done that with a lot of my gear because I'm just been like I'm so strapped but I need to get these demos done yeah. so that I can actually earn the next paycheck they so, understand musicians and how poor we all are <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you think Harley um I think we don't really have time to, to to tackle the next topic. No, I think we'll have to come back to that next week. We will. We will, Rob. Uh, Mr. Robert Horn, that was a great idea. Just talking about music values, um, which, I mean, we'll briefly touch on it. I've just... Um, I think we should put it out there and see what other people yeah, think exactly. uh, ready so, for next week. Um, I'll just say a statement. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay. So, because he's, he's talking about, you know, how we listen to music and streaming and whether it's making us value music less. So, in that vein, guys... We've got to think about this. <laughs> Your mic's falling over. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake. this morning. So, all right. So we've got to think about um, how we value music and, and what we do with it. So I just basically wrote a little thing off the top of my dome. I just said, music is worth what you make of it. Uh, it can be a throwaway song by an artist uh, like, you know, that we've just written off the top of our head that didn't we didn't really care about. It could be the one song that helps the listener remembers someone who passed away uh, or a great holiday, a night in with your friends, a time when you couldn't stop laughing or was the soundtrack to a film that your family it was a family favourite. Um, how you value that isn't monetary and how you listen to it at the time rarely comes into it. I mean, I don't sit there and think, oh, I remember when I first heard um, Deftones. Mm-hmm. Oh, I listened to it on iTunes. No, I, I'm like, no, it, I listened to it in this situation, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so unless your specific purpose was to sit down next to a speaker and listen intently, you're not going to notice. No. And I, don't, I think we're doing that less and less these days, which would yeah. have been a nice topic to talk about. Um, music is much like an ambience to our lives now, I think. There's mm. so much of it about that it's just everywhere. Uh, we can ignore it or give our entire attention to. Either way, it's there. And due to supply, it's around us in increasing volume uh, through Spotify, through YouTube, everything we just got music wherever we want it so whether that means it it's worth less worth less mm. or uh it's worth more i think you guys have to decide so maybe you guys should just let us know what you think please do, you think, do yeah do email you... us at harley and josh show at gmail.com yes indeed or find us on facebook uh post on our wall or message us privately just give us your thoughts if you don't want your product uh, you don't want your thoughts your being it, yeah. aired uh publicly we will still say it on the exactly. air but we won't mention your name or whatever we ask every week what you guys want to talk about from now on um yeah chris bonus really wanted to talk about beans and whether they make you fart and if they're mus- most musical fruit um and i agree i think they are the most musical fruit that i can think of are they a fruit that you eat <laughs> he said because it's the, the thing is musical fruit the more you eat the more you toot uh, i think it's, i don't think veg rhymes with toot no, that's true. Very true. <laughs> Mubin. And on um, that note. <laughs> <laughs> right, so let's get into the giggly. Yes. Oh, so we do it like a... Bing, meow. So, Harley, we've yes. got Valentine's Day Thursday. What you bought me? I have bought you <laughs> some cookies. <laughs> Love cookies? No, just normal oh. cookies. <laughs> White chocolate. Um, February 14th, Valentine's Night. Ikoko. I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to try and get along after we are going to Yeah, we're going to go. Um, Three Wise Monkeys in Ipswich. That's uh, uh, Thursday 14th. Um, Also, uh, on the 15th, We've got the Falcon at Ipswich. We've got a mid-month mix. That's unwritten, unwritten records doing lots of sort of tech house, um, uh, all original stuff. So check that out. Nice. Um, we've got on February 15th, there's so much Valentine's Bash with MJ Soul at the Trinity Sports and Social Club. Uh, there's also on the 15th, there's Ransoms and Boat Rich at Coda Music. Haven't been there yet in Colchester. That's Friday at nine. Some original music, some punk kind of stuff. Uh, February 15th, we've got Matt White and the Mulchins yeah. at the Duke, of U- uh, the Duke of York. Yeah, yes. that, that's Friday at 8.30. Uh, also, February 15th, we've got Lady J and the Troublemaker. Yes, that, the Angel. I'm that's the you. Troublemaker. You are the Troublemaker. I saw you on the photo. Yeah. Uh, but 16th, Chart Attack, live yeah. at the Gardener's Arms. Looking forward Saturday to that, night, yeah. Featuring Nick Keeble. 
Uh, no, this one is this one's with Oscar. It's going to be Oscar. Nick's nice. with us next weekend. That's awesome. But please do come along anyway. Oscar's yeah. just as good, <laughs> just as pretty. Saturday sixteenth, not quite as pretty. Anyway. Right, I'm not sure about that. Uh, Saturday sixteenth of February, we've got the Smokehouse. Have got Echo Location, uh, Skiffuffle, and the author of that wonderful uh, track that we heard over uh, earlier on time called Marwin Scale. Uh, uh, Andrew Culture is playing with Dystopian Sound Collective. So that's Saturday, the uh, 16th at the Smokehouse. Also, Saturday, we've got Three Always Monkeys in Ipswich. I've got Impilo. Yeah. And Ben Gobel Trio. I'm doing the sound for that one. Not a shame I'm going to miss that. Yeah. Gonna... I'm going to be there, so I won't be able to see you play. Um, we've got Encoder in Colchester on Saturday, 16th. We've got Pet Needs, Shooting the Bang Bang, and Horrible Dolphins. Nice. All three of those we've, we like on this show. Uh, 16th, we've also got Hurri- Hurricane Alley at the Railway. Uh, Saturday at 9. Yeah. Uh, 16th, we've also got Valentine's with Ashton Jones. So you're going to have to choose between MJ Soul and Ashton Jones. It's Ooh. Really, that's hard. Um, so that's at the Ipswich School of Dancing. So that's on Saturday at 8 o'clock. Great. Um, for also on Saturday, we've got Motherfunker Live and DJ Dean H. They are at the Steamboat Tavern. Uh, it's a Saturday at 7.30, so there's a lot going on Saturday. Yeah. You want to either be at the Gardener's Arms or the Three Wise Monkeys, though, because that's where we'll be. Just come see us. Yes, mate. Uh, last <laughs> and bring, bring us got. cookies. <laughs> but yes, we love cookies. Um, the Shrew, uh, Amber Durren, and Joe Lee's. Jolie's, our friend Jolie's, Jolie's, Jolie's. That's the best harmonies we've ever done. Uh, they've got an acoustic night at the Brewers Arms, just around the corner from here. Amazing, that's um, great. So yeah, that would be nice to see them Sunday at seven o'clock. And the last thing we've got to plug, Icebreaker. Yes, the February session. That's 17th. Sunday, seventeenth. I think it's at two or three. Uh, I think it starts. To say two, just to be, just to be, um, yeah. you know, to be safe and not sorry. Um, so that's at the railway. If you have a, a budding musician who is under eighteen, or you yourself are a budding musician and under eighteen, get down to that. Rob Lewis will nurture that talent and get you on that stage. I oh, yeah. promise you. I'm trying to find the the event page to find the exact time, but I can't. So we'll just have to uh, <laughs> just we'll turn up at it, two, man. and if you're early, have a drink. But um, oh, we've got to quickly just. Uh, you know, touch on the Facebook game because uh, your your <laughs> idea for this week was great. It was uh, so turn a band name into a film film pitch. My first one was uh, a comedy about three middle class Englishmen trying to be gangster. The film's called Bee Gees. <laughs> Bee Gees. Um, so, but we had some we had some great ones. So we had from Rainer, the Village People, a heartwarming story of four unlikely professionals join forces to help less fortunate young adults. They use their arms to spell things. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, what's this one? Uh, my favourite two are uh, from Andy D. Martino and James Skinner. So I'm going to read uh, Andy's one. Can you read James's one? Yeah, I need to find it. But I'm yeah. going to read Andy's one. The darkness. When night falls, an unseen evil descends. Normal folk depend descends upon normal folk, making them wear sparkly jumpsuits and screeching at everyone about a thing called love. <laughs> I'll use go your on, phone. Go I, on, go on, yeah. So we've got one? James Skinner's one. They're just below it. James Skinner's. There we go. Rock Project. Oh, gave me a long one. You know I can't read. <laughs> In a world. No. Go on. Red Hot Chili Peppers. Four teenagers flunked high school and edged their way into the blue movie industry, namely the Red Hot Something or Others. <laughs> After auditioning with the wrong studio, thanks to a silly sat-nav... <laughs> <laughs> they end up making a curry on live TV and using some very fancy chili peppers. Flea reacted badly to this and launched into his trumpet launched his trumpet high up into the air. And when it fell back down, it was man tr- uh, it was magically transformed into a bass guitar, and the red hot chili peppers were formed on a live cooking show. Anthony Kiedis' unique dancing and vocals were inspired by the Naga chili making his exit stage down. <laughs> <laughs> very good James oh. I like that so yeah that's... can we make these into actual films if anybody yeah, wants to do just do that that'd be pitch. great Steven Spielberg if you're listening oh yeah um, so that's been a I think he needs show. a break yeah. <laughs> yeah. this could be this could be his big chance of the big time yeah, he, yeah he's, he's a lesser known guy so thank you guys so much for listening I am well well pleased that David Langdon sent this track to yeah. me this one's called friend Promises. of the show friend of the show you legend uh, long time listener first yes. time uh, caller yeah um, he sent me a great email and I was giggling the whole time but just basically talking about how attractive we both are um it was we get that a lot yeah we do sorry guys um this one's called promises by under on the sky this is a really really great track it's got a good pacing to it and it's got a good attitude it's going to be available february 15th 
uh, we'll be posting about it. Yeah. We love you. Do some awesome stuff and subscribe, won't you? Yeah, please do. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.